laboratory preparation of oxygen. So oxygen gas can be prepared in the lab through various methods. In our lesson today, we are going to prepare oxygen using two methods. Number one, using hydrogen peroxide and number two, using potassium manganate 7. So stay tuned. Now hydrogen peroxide, our first reagent. So hydrogen peroxide is a colorless liquid that naturally decomposes over time, leading to the formation of water and oxygen gas. But this process usually takes a bit of time. So in order to speed it up in the lab, a catalyst is introduced. So when you talk about a catalyst, we simply mean a compound that speeds up the rate of a reaction but remains unaffected. At the end of the reaction, the catalyst will simply remain the way it was at the beginning. Now in this reaction, the catalyst that is used is manganese for oxide, which is the black solid you're seeing in the flask. Now, manganese for oxide is going to be in the flask. Where would hydrogen peroxide be? In the thistle funnel. Now, you can use a thistle funnel or a dropping funnel. A dropping funnel is much better, of course, because it has a tap, so you can regulate the amount of liquid that flows past. But if you're using a thistle funnel, such as in this case, you have to take into consideration one thing. The end of the thistle funnel should be immersed in the liquid to prevent escape of the gas produced, which in this case is oxygen, of course. So, thistle funnel, we are going to measure out a specific volume of hydrogen peroxide. So, hydrogen peroxide in the presence of manganese for oxide decomposes, forming water and oxygen gas. The oxygen gas produced passes into the delivery tube and into the trough where you have the gas jar. Now, oxygen gas in this method is collected using over water method. Over water method, as stated, is simply you're collecting a gas over water. Now, gases that can be collected using this method will either have to be insoluble in water or slightly soluble in water, such as in the case of oxygen. Now, this of course makes sense. If you're having a gas that is soluble in water and you're collecting it using over water, duh, the gas will simply dissolve in water and at the end of it, you will have no gas gas to collect it will simply have formed a solution so oxygen gas can be used for this method because it's slightly soluble in water and that brings us to the end of the first method second method potassium manganate 7 now potassium manganate 7 is a dark purple solid on heating it decomposes it breaks down leading to the formation of three products i guess you already know what the first product is going to be and yes oxygen gas oxygen gas guys now the other two products are number one potassium manganate six and number two manganese four oxide in case you're wondering hmm this seems familiar it should be familiar because this is the catalyst that we used in the first method how cool is chemistry it's all related right so potassium manganate 7 on heating decomposes leading to the formation of potassium manganate 6 manganese 4 oxide and oxygen gas now oxygen gas can be tested in the lab you can find out whether a particular gas is actually oxygen or not by using a glowing split so when you take a wooden split light it on and then put on the flame it glows. That is essentially what a glowing splint is. Now, if you were to introduce a glowing splint in a container having oxygen, it's going to relight. If it relights, then that is the positive test for oxygen, such as what is happening in this case. So we are having oxygen that has been produced, and that is the reason why it relights the glowing split. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the test for oxygen gas. In case you're interested in more tests for gases, be sure to check out my next video where I show it to you with discussions. See you there.